guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about how many hours per week should you be studying if you are studying medical coding, health information management, health information technology, or CDI. And I will also be reviewing the description box of all my videos. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. Okay guys, so <laughs> I get the question a lot of how many hours per week should I be studying, Blue? I, I don't think I'm studying enough or I, maybe I'm studying too much. The good rule of thumb is to study 20 hours per week minimum. Now this will keep you on a very good track as far as like <clears throat> having the time to learn all the things that you need to learn as you're going through your program or as you're doing your self-study. 20 hours per week is attainable. Does it matter what your job situation is? People will write me and tell me, well, Blue, no, that's not going to work for me. I work 40, 40 hours per week. How long are you expecting to give yourself to learn medical billing and coding, for example? Oh, six months. <laughs> that's not going to work if you're not putting in 20 hours per week. Now, you may be able to get through a program, whether it's CDI, HIM, HIT, or medical coding, you may be able to get to the program, you may be even be able to pass the test, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you're grasping the material. 20 hours per week will give you that time to be able to build that knowledge. Now, how do we get there if we work a full-time 40 hour a week job and we've got a family and kids and everything else, how do we get there? Well, you start off <laughs> by making those little pockets of time. And believe it or not, even just little pockets of time can add up. I've always said this, if you're driving um, to work in the morning, it's a 30 minute drive, you can be listening to um, channels about uh, medical terminology or anatomy, or you could be listening to your guidelines if, you've, if you have them, you can be listening to them. So that's 30 minutes you can be listening and, and taking advantage of that, of that time that you have, that little pocket of time, instead of listening to the radio and like wasting your time when you could be studying and by listening, okay? Then you have your 30 minute lunch break. It doesn't hurt to pull out your flashcards while you're eating or listen to something while you're eating and just, that's more study time. And then on your way home, that's another 30 minutes. That's already an hour and a half that you've gotten in the morning time, right? Morning and afternoon time, you've got an hour and a half. Now, all you have to do is just do an hour and a half in the evening. And I know you have that. <laughs> I know you have that even after you put the kids to bed. You can still be listening to something while you're washing dishes or while you're cooking or while you're doing anything else that you need to, to take care of your family. You can be taking in those little pockets of time and still be making good use of your time. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be sitting somewhere and actually writing something out, although that does help. I will say that. So take advantage of that time, being able to do that. Um, people think that we need to study for hours on end and we don't. Um, <laughs> the longer you study, the more likely you are to not retain the information, the more likely you are to burn out. So study for one hour at a time, take a break and then come back to it. 15 minutes, 30 minute break, and then you come back to it. And an hour and a half again in the evening is, is attainable. All right. So that's already three hours you've gotten for one day, three hours for one day minimum. That's a minimum. If you can get more time in than that, that's great. But again, you don't want to push yourself too hard where you're going to burn out. So kind of watch and be careful there, right? Listen to your body and listen to how you feel. Make sure that you're taking care of yourself, that you're not um, overloading on caffeine, that you're not overloading on unhealthy foods. You want to be able to give your body something that's nutritious that can help you to stay focused and not you're not feeling miserable or bogged down uh, because of something that you ate or something that you drank or like, you know, drinking too much coffee and then you're all wired up. You don't want to do that and you don't need to do that. If you take it a little bit at a time, it will start to get easier once you start getting into the habit of it. And remember, it takes 30 days to build a habit. <laughs> so... That's three hours. If you do that all week long, you manage to squirrel in that time all week long. That's 15 hours you will have completed in five days, right? So then you have your weekend. And now all you have to do is make up five hours during the, the weekend. 
Now, if you want to give yourself a whole day off, that's good. I rec actually do recommend that. I don't recommend that you have to study every single day because I know that people need a break and I'm sure that your families <laughs> will want you to be around too because remember, you can't neglect your families. Your family has to be supportive of you. Now, they may not understand it in the beginning and they may not like it in the beginning that you're spending time doing the studies. I know because I hear the stories all the time, unfortunately. Um, but then after a while, if your family is understanding and they see that this is important to you, remember that you are a role model for your children or your family members that are watching you and looking at you to be an inspiration. So remember that when you're trying to delegate your time and make sure that you're doing everything like you're supposed to. All right. So that's just one thing that you have to still be able to keep in mind. Take advantage of the space that you're studying in. Hang up anatomy posters in which when I get into <laughs> my description box, I'll talk about that in a minute. But hang up anatomy posters so that way you have that visual um, to learn. Remember when we were kids and we had the teacher who put the letters and the numbers on the border of the room? It is the same way when you're studying. You need to have that stimulus up of, okay, this is the anatomy. Okay, these are my medical terms of the week, like the prefixes, suffixes, and root words. You don't want to do whole terms, brother. Uh, you want to do prefixes, suffixes, and root words. If you want to make a list of your top five that you want to learn <laughs> and then just change them out, so that way you see like five in a day, right? And you maybe leave that paper up for like three or four days and then you change it and then you learn a new one. That's going to help you too because you're seeing it every single day and you're looking at it. So that will help you build your medical terminology. A lot of people get like overwhelmed with medical terminology because they say, oh, blue, it's so hard. It is actually a key ingredient <laughs> of being an extremely good coder is to know medical terminology and know your anatomy. If you don't know those, you will be hurting because it's not something so easy, you know? Everything is, is different <laughs> in anatomy and medical terminology. Medical terminology is made up of Latin and Greek words. So essentially, you are learning a new language. This is why it's very important to build on it like we did as kids. See that stimulus and be able to recall it later on. So that's my advice there <laughs> when it comes to that. But squirreling away that time, you see that those 15 hours and then on the weekend you can get your five hours in, whether it's when you get up and you're drinking your cup of coffee and you're flipping through, you're working through your workbooks, you know, it's just a, just an hour and then you take a break and then you come back to it and then you do like 30 minutes and then you take a break, you come back to it, do another 30 minutes, that's two hours, take you a break, for the afternoon and then you know you have the rest of the evening to get the other three hours in so that's just something that you can try to incorporate so that you can start learning it a lot of people who get frustrated with medical coding and say why well, don't understand it's because they're not putting in enough time with it it's the same thing with cdi you know there's a lot of nurses that hear about cdi and they say well blue i want to study cdi but i don't know how to study <laughs> i don't know how to study for it i'm going to talk about that book but with the CDI thing, again, you have to work through it the same way a medical coder would work through it. You're going through and you're doing your 20 hours a week as well. It doesn't matter that you have your RN. This is CDI is something completely different, but it is very needed in the industry. And so to be a good CDI, you need to be able to understand the medical coding language. Now, medical coding is not a requirement for CDI. However, it is important that the CDI understands medical coding because you have to be that middle person between the coder and the provider. If you can't understand what the coder is trying to tell you, if they're trying to tell you, hey, there's this hole in this documentation that we need you to address with a doctor, if you don't understand what they're where they're coming from, it's, it's not going to be a very good relationship. And you want a good relationship so that that facility or that doctor's office can meet its full potential. I'm just saying, guys, I've been in the industry long enough to know and to see that sometimes people think that, oh, well, I have this, so that must mean I, that I know. And a lot of times, if you haven't developed yourself or you don't listen to sound advice <laughs> about development, you could be potentially missing out on a lot. I'm just saying. 
And the same thing to my degree holders. If you are out there in an HIM, Health Information Management, or an HIT, Health Information Technology Program, these are our leaders. And you are not going to be <laughs> very concerned with the coding side because the, the coding part for both of those degree programs is very small. It is literally almost an afterthought. The bulk of those programs is going to be about like the laws and ethics <laughs> and financial management and all those things and dealing with um, staff and staffing and all of that stuff. That's what those programs are namely for. But you still need those 20 hours per week. And that's a lot of hours, yes. But it's going to be more beneficial for you in the end because you're going to be able to make really good time through your program. You're going to be able to absorb a lot more and you're going to be able to uh, pass those very coveted <laughs> credential exams once you get done with your degree program. I've heard of people getting through their degree programs, barely making it through, and they said, I'm too scared to sit for the RHIT or the RHIA. And to me, that's really sad because if you are spending all that money to go to college and then you stop at the end because you're too afraid to sit for the industry designation, the RHIA or the RHIT, that's, that's, that's sad, guys. <laughs> Don't do that to yourselves. Prepare yourselves. And this is the best way to prepare yourselves well is to go with this 20 hours per week. And, and in that time, you can switch it up between working with your workbooks, you know, using those flashcards, making flashcards, watching videos, all of that counts as study time, guys. Even just listening. We absorb about 10% 10, 10 of the things that we hear. I know. <laughs> uh, because of the comments, I know that. Uh, but we absorb 10%. But 10% is a lot better and a lot higher than 0%. Not even studying at all. People getting so overwhelmed with, oh my gosh. <laughs> It's just so much. So hopefully my my advice will give you some kind of direction to go into. And the links that I'm going to talk about here right now, <laughs> um, hopefully you, you click on this description box so that way you can see this for real for yourself. And this, this is, these are the YouTube video links that I have for, for my channel for the videos that I recommend. And there's also affiliate links. You do not have to click on these affiliate links as I may get a small commission if you do, but you don't have to if it is a link for that. Um, and I also, you know, list a bunch of other things. So with that being said, and so we're all clear there, <laughs> uh, 20 hours per week, doesn't matter what you're going through, 20 hours per week. Now, um, for the description box, let's talk about this. I tell you all, all the time, it, you need to contact me if you are curious about my resume rewrites, my um, my tutoring rates, anything. Check the description box below. Blue, how do I contact you? I literally said all of my contact information is in the description box. I'll still get that question. Hey, Blue, what uh, anatomy books do you recommend? Uh, Blue, um, well, I have this other question. Again, it was probably there. So I'm going to take the time today to read what is in the description box so you all know what is there. So <laughs> here we go. First, I have the disclaimer. And the disclaimer, it just says the thoughts and opinions expressed in this video are mine and mine alone. They should not be considered the opinions of any medical coding association. You are not required to click on any of the links below as they are affiliate links. And I may get a small commission if you do. Thank you. And then I talk about the only health information management program that I will recommend. That link is in the description box below. All right. It is my referral link. Um, you don't have to click it because the name of the school is right there. And all you have to do is let your fingers do the walk. And if you don't want to click the link, um, then I have how to set up a study schedule for medical coding. My video that I did on that could be reached there. Then I have the independent study sequence video with book recommends. So I've said this before, if you want to study on your own for medical coding, you can. The four main medical coding credentials, the CCS, the gold standard of medical coding credentials, the CCSP, the CCA, or the CPC, and, that, and the CPC is with AAPC, um, and the first three with, are with the American Health Information Management Association, AHIMA, um, 
If you want to go and study on your own, none of these four requires you to go through a formal program. Now, I've seen people say, oh, no, Blue, the CCS says you need experience. It says that it is recommended that you have experience for the CCS because it is the gold standard and you do have to know a lot <laughs> for that. So it does help if you have experience. So again, read carefully when you go to these websites and you're, and you're looking at this and you want to sit here and rebut somebody who's been in the industry long enough to know better. I'm just saying. So um, that uh, when you click on that independent study sequence with the book recommends, it has the syllabus for how, how long should you go through medical terminology? How long should you go through anatomy? How long should you be in ICD-10 CM? or CPT or ICD-10 PCS coding, learning it. So it's just giving you a rough estimate. Some people are gonna take a little bit longer. Some people might take shorter. It really all depends on the individual. So that's just my thing to kind of help you guys. It's for entertainment purposes only, <laughs> um, but it is designed to help you if you want to have some kind of direction, if you want to do that independent study. So it is there. Uh, somebody asked me, oh, I thought it was a PDF. I never mentioned that that syllabus was a PDF. Never said that. Um, and then I have my resume review rate. So my resume review rate is here. So the resume rewrite and the cover letter, cover letter creation if needed is included and a 30 minute Zoom meeting. It is a seven day turnaround for rewrites and I only accept Zelle or post office money orders, USPS post office money orders. I do not accept any other form of payment. So please don't ask me if I accept PayPal or Venmo or Cash App because I do not deal with those. I only deal with Zelle or uh, money orders. And then my address is there as well. And where you can uh, contact me for booking is there. And there are no refunds for this service. All right, I'm just saying. And then, um, let's see. Um, and then I have want to book a um, medical coding tutoring session or professional coaching. I have that there. I have my rate in the description box. And then I also do mock interviews, all right? So all meetings are done over Zoom, all right? Um, and then I have, if you're interested in additional exercises for medical coding or want to know more about me personally, <laughs> higher levels include one-on-one -on -one tutoring um, or other one-on-one, -on -one, um, like for professional coaching. Check my Patreon channel out. The minimum pledge is currently $10 per month. Uh, and all funds go towards my continuing education. And then of course I give the website for uh, my Patreon channel. And then I said, if this video helped you, please like and subscribe. <laughs> um, and then I have interested in learning CDI. I list my book recommend for that, the CCDS exam guide. I have the fourth edition in here as listed as what I recommend. I also have um, Understanding Pathophysiology. That's the seventh edition. I have the book and the workbook that go with it. So the both links to those are in the description box. If you feel like your medical coding program or maybe your CDI program is not that heavy in pathophysiology and you want to kind of beef up on that knowledge, those are really good books. So it's the book and the companion workbook. So I think it's a, a good deal. <laughs> and of course, those are the Amazon affiliate links. And then I have the ICD-10-CM and ICD-10-PCS coding handbook with the answers. I do have the 2022 version in here. Um, that's what I could find on Amazon that was a decent price. So that book is listed. The CPC study guide, I, I found the 2022 edition. Sometimes you can actually find the, the newer books more cheaper because for some reason the 2019 versions of the books that I recommend shot up in price. So I don't know if it's because a lot of people are buying them or what, <laughs> because the current year books are cheaper. So uh, now I have those 2022 editions. You can study with a year older book. That is fine. Uh, but just, you know, a couple years older, it'll save you a few bucks. So just my advice anyway. Then I have Essentials of Anatomy and Physiology. And then I have an Essentials of Anatomy, Anatomy and Physiology workbook to go with it. So I have both of those listed there, um, the pharma flashcards, right? And then I have the 2022 clinical coding workout. It's the AHEMA book. So 
I have had, had some people who were successful with that book, like using it to practice with. But I mean, it's there if you want to look at it and check it out. And then I have uh, Shop With Me and I have uh, the dry erase board that I recommend, the HP DeskJet wireless printer that I have, the Asus Vivo book laptop, which is the one I use. Um, then I have the L-shaped desk is by Cole's Home, the ergonomic office chair, which is the one that I have. Um, then I have Medical Terminology, A Living Language, and it's available for rent. So if you want to rent some of your books, you can totally do that on Amazon. And then I have my highly, highly, highly recommended ICD-10-CM and ICD-10-PCS, the 2019 version. If you want to see if it's uh, cheaper, <laughs> although I don't know. And then um, I have Pharma Made Easy. And then I have the Dorland's Dictionary of Medical Acronyms and Abbreviations, which is very good. I like that book. And then I have, of course, my highly, highly recommended Law, Liability, and Ethics for Medical Office Professionals. That is the number one book that I recommend if you're studying medical um, law and ethics because it has everything in it. <laughs> it is a very good book, so it's there. Then it, I have the thing for the 18 pack of anatomy posters, anatomy flashcards, and then, of course, I talk about my M&M uh, mug, which was sent to me by a viewer. So I love it. And so if you love it, too, you can get yours. <laughs> um, and then books I recommend from the Optum360 coding website. So this is not an ad for Optum360, but you all know how much I love Optum360. And I list the ones that are there because ICD-10-CM has the one for hospitals, and then it has the one expert for physicians. That's the one that I use, and that's the one that I recommend. And you can use that to take your test with, so just saying. And then, of course, the ICD-10 PCS, the spiral bound. That's the one you need. Um, the current year, obviously, version, <laughs> or whatever year you test you're on. Um, that's the one that you can use uh, for your exam. And with that PCS... Um, it's got a helpful uh, appendix in the back and it lists a bunch of uh, procedures you can look up and then the next appendix over and appendix N like in Nancy it has all of the answers and some of the rationale so if you need help learning ICD-10 PCS that is the book that I recommend you just have to go through it because sometimes people get very frustrated with trying to read all of it it's better if you just work through the problems because that's sometimes better to help you to understand quicker, I'm just saying. Um, and then I have, of course, the Higgs Picks level two book there. And then I have my keywords. So yes, that is what is in the description box below. Notice that my contact information is there. So if you need to contact me, that's how you do it. All right, so, so I hope this video was helpful for you guys. Now, take things one step at a time. Don't get overwhelmed. Uh, it's a lot to learn this and you're not going to learn this overnight. You're not going to learn this no matter what these schools try to sell you. You're not going to learn this in 16 weeks. You're not even going to learn it in two months. I've seen that too. That was That's sickening, guys. It's really sickening because of the simple fact that what we do is so important and some people trivialize it by making these programs so short and then have the nerve to say that these people are trained medical coders when they're not. They don't even have... The, the knowledge yet enough to be out there. And, and then when people are out there like that, and then these doctors see these people, and then they're like, well, they're not trained. They don't know. So then it reflects badly on all of us as in the industry because they think, oh, well, these coders don't know what they're doing. I have been insulted many a time <laughs> by new providers who come in and say, oh, well, the coders, they don't know anything. And then the other providers are, that are my providers that they know, they're like, oh, uh, no, I don't think you understand. <laughs> uh, Blue is a little different. <laughs> Blue really loves medical coding. So just, you know, and so then I have to go in there and be like, okay, you know, this person is a, a non-believer of, of coders. Let me show them what a coder is supposed to be like. What a coder who is interested in helping them and being their teammate is actually like. What is it like to have this? So I'm saying, <laughs> and that's why I encourage all of you, you know, to do the same thing. That's why I encourage y'all as much as I do. And I push y'all to, to look at these books and read and do your research because it's important to us that even though we've never gone to medical school and we have to know all of this stuff. And even though we, we don't have all of those years in that we play catch up 
by actively trying to learn. I'm just saying. So I'm going to wrap this one up. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you all have a great weekend. If you're on my Patreon channel, uh, the study hall will be live <laughs> on Saturday at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. All right. I will see y'all then. Bye.